Hey folks, I'm Mr. Hartster, and I wanted to talk to you about finding vertical and horizontal asymptotes, and we'll touch just a little bit on x and y intercepts. So, starting off with this formula, or this equation, we're going to find horizontal asymptotes first, then vertical. So to find horizontal, I need to look at the degree of the top and the degree of the bottom. The degree in the numerator is 1, the degree in the denominator is 1. So I'm looking at my largest x's on both the top and bottom and seeing what those exponents are. Since they are the same, that means that my horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals and then dividing my leading coefficients. So the leading coefficient on the top is a 2. The leading coefficient on bottom is a 1. So it's just going to be my horizontal asymptote equaling 1. Now for the vertical, that one is, I think, a little bit easier. I'm going to look at my denominator and say that it's not allowed to equal 0. So I subtract my 1. x cannot be negative 1. So that means that the vertical asymptote is at x equals 1. Rough sketch here. Horizontal is here at 2. The vertical is over at negative 1. Now let's find x-intercept, because that's usually helpful. To find x-intercept, I set my y equal to 0. Multiply by my denominator, get rid of it. 0 times anything, still 0. So that side 0 equals 2x, dividing by 2. I know that x equals 0 is, a y, or is an x-intercept. I'm going to plot that on my graph right there. y-intercept, similarly set up, except now it's going to be zeros for my x's. So that's 0 over 1. 0 divided by 1 is, in fact, 0. Not undefined or anything weird. A lot of people get confused about that. That is perfectly OK. And that just means I'm right over that point again. I tend to get really close to my asymptotes. And since I know I'm in that at this point, I must be down here. My other graph must be up there like that. That's as far as any of my students need to go, is to just kind of be in general, this is what the shape is. If we want to be even more fancy than that, we're going to plug things into a calculator. But in general, you should be able to find out where these shapes mostly are. All right, let's go on to the next one. Slightly more complicated. The degree is a little bit higher on top and on bottom. This time, I'm going to find vertical asymptotes first, because again, I think those are a little bit easier. 4x squared minus 1 is not allowed to equal 0, because I can't divide by 0 in my fraction up here. So 4x squared minus 1, ooh, that actually factors. I'm going to do it the factoring way. Or I could add the 1 and divide by 4 and square root. But I'm going to factor instead because that will remind us of difference of squares. I factored it using difference of squares. I set each piece not equal to 0. Solving for my x. That's not squared. So there are my two. Then I'm going to find my horizontals. So I'm going to look at my degree of my top is 2. Degree of my bottom is 2. So that means it's going to be y equals dividing those leading coefficients. So 2 over 4, which is a 1 half. Quick drawing here. Those are 1s. And y is at a half. Then I would plug all of these pieces in and figure out kind of where some things end up showing up and uh, go from there. I'm actually not going to do that in this case, but that's what you would do. You would take some numbers from this side. I would do like 1. I would plug a 1 in. Then I would plug in a 0. And then I would plug in a, like, uh, it's a negative 1, so I'd plug in like a negative 2. See what everything shakes out to be. But let's move on for now. Now I'm here. Vertical asymptotes set my denominator equal to, not equal to 1. Or 0, sorry. x squared can't be 1. Square root both sides. x cannot be plus or minus 1. Horizontal asymptotes. The degree top is 2. The degree bottom is 2. So that means I'm looking at y equals my leading coefficients. 2 over 1. Awesome. Just found them all. And then again, I would plug in numbers from each section and figure out if they were above the horizontal asymptote or below. Every so often we do cross it. 
uh, but we don't deal with that a whole lot in Algebra 2. But that's in general what we're looking for. Hopefully this video is helpful. If it was, please click that like button. If you have any questions, please leave those in the comments. And if you're one of my students, remember you can always come down to Math Lab and me or one of the other math teachers that's there that period can be of some assistance. Have a great day, folks.